Hello, I'm Eddie African. We're at the Western Kentucky Botanical Garden today here in Owensboro, Kentucky. I'm with Shane Robertson from GSS. He's helping me out to do a little video down here. Uh, we're going to take a walk through the garden today and uh, look at some things to photograph in some possible different ways. Sometimes maybe when you're traveling or on vacation or because of the hours that a place of business or a location is accessible, uh, you may not be able to go in and shoot photographs uh, in the ideal situations with the perfect lighting and that sort of thing. Uh, there may be a weather event that affected something that you were going to shoot, possibly a frost like we had here last night uh, that could possibly burn a bloom or something like that. So we're going to walk through the garden and look at a couple of different things like that. We'll pick a couple spots and kind of highlight those, uh, play with the lighting a little bit, maybe change up some lenses. We'll look at the angles of, uh, of how we shoot and perspective that we might get by changing those angles and uh, hopefully everybody can learn something from this.
As I approach an area that I think I want to get some photographs of, I'm going to start looking at it as I approach the, the tree, the bush, the flower, whatever. Uh, again, here we've had some frost as recently as last night, and so what would normally be a really pretty tree is looking pretty scruffy right now. In some areas, we've got some freeze damage out here in the brown limb, brown leaves, and most botanical gardens frown on you doing anything to touch or damage their plant uh, that might enhance your photograph because damage could occur, and if everybody did it, then they may not have anything left. So. I've identified a couple of places. There's a bloom up in here in the middle that the sun is hitting right now, and I'm going to try to take a shot of that. I'm using my 300 lens because it allows me to zoom in on the subject and produces a little bit of bokeh, which, which creates a nice background for the picture. So I'm sitting here, and I'm on a uh, 400 ISO setting, and shutter speed's 400. I'm using an F14. Uh, that way I can get a little more depth of field, a little more detail with the flyer. And so here we go. We're going to shoot this magnolia. It's a little breezy out here today, so it makes it a little tough. Things moving around, so I want to use that faster shutter speed. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I can see some detail there. Maybe come at it a little bit different angle here. That gives me a little bit of blue sky background looking through the tree. I'm going to turn vertical. Get some vertical shots of it. Always remember to keep that uh, the portrait shot and the landscape bone too. And I'm going to see if I can get a shot through it through some of these other limbs to kind of help frame it. And let's see, we'll work on that. I like that. We got from this side, we got it from the back side, and we kind of make the most of that one. So as you're walking around in an area when you go to shoot, keep an eye open. You never know what you might see. Now I found a robin up on a nest over here, so we're going to get around and take some pictures of her sitting up there on the nest. Okay, so we've got a nice apple tree here that uh, hasn't gotten burned. So we've got some nice shots where the sun's coming through and kind of highlighting some little spots. So I'll crank in there. I'm down to 100 ISO shooting manual with my Zoom F14. I'm gonna lock focus and recompose. And I'm gonna hit the color range a little bit on this thing as far as my shutter speed. Uh, reason being, sometimes the, the lighter color, pale pink and white, tend to blow out a little bit in the sun. And so while I'm here, I'm gonna kinda of shoot the range. I'm gonna overexpose a little bit and underexpose as well, and hopefully I come out with a good image out of all of those. Another thing to look for is, is the possibility of being able to shoot a flyer from the backside where you've got a lot of sun on the front side of it and you get the patterns in the petals and that sort of thing and can make an interesting shot. I've got a, a bloom up here that's being lit well from the front and I'm gonna shoot pictures of it from the back. And what it gives me, it gives me shadows back there in those through those leaves of the other petals. It also brings out kind of a luminance of the, the petals, almost a sparkle to them, almost like a glitter effect. Another one up there. This one gives me some sky, blue sky background. So I like that. I've got a bloom that's completely open, one that's partially open, and one that's still a tight bud. So I like that shot right there. I'm up in the middle of the tree, shooting back out towards the outside and the light. Okay, so here walking across, we have found there's a there's a red tree in bloom over here on the other side of the bridge with water underneath the bridge. You get a little bit of a reflection back in the red. It's a little bit shaded, but if you zoom in on it, 
zoom tight, you get more of the color. And I'm going to focus on the reflection that I'm seeing. And then I'm going to recompose the shot to where I get the best what I can get as far as what I have in the photo. We come up on this little area here. There's some wild violets here, some variegated hostas. And we see that, and we can do two things. We can shoot it from this angle up here. It's about a 45 degree angle, you know, and it's like you just might casually walk through a garden or an area and see it and say, oh, that's pretty. I'm going to take a picture of it. But then when you take that vertical picture like that, the angle is so sharp. So I'm going to get down low now. I'm going to kneel down, and then I'm going to bend over a little bit at that. And I'm going to get a little bit lower perspective with this and take some shots of that. Okay, so as I walk the trail here, I come up and there's this little white dog with it starting to bloom. And on its own, it doesn't do a whole lot. I can stand back and take some pictures of it. It doesn't give me much to, to really highlight or anything. But as I come closer to it, I see that there's a mounding green plant over here. It has some nice foliage on it. And I pick up the green background and I can get some nice shots. So as I walk into here in this area, I see the one little bloom off this PJM rhododendron over here and it has a background of sandstone. So I'm gonna to try to get in an angle to where I can get a good face on shot with it, that isolated bloom. Another thing to keep in mind as you're taking pictures of flowers that have numerous petals on them is trying to be as parallel to the front of that bloom as you can be so that you get a more uniform focus throughout the blossom. Okay, so as I walk past here, I see this nice little iris over here. It's the only one in bloom so far. And trying to find a good angle to get a shot on it that has a acceptable background or a better background. There's a stack of cut firewood over here. So I'm gonna step up in the edge here. And when I get up here in this area and get down and zoom in on that iris, then my background becomes the end of that log over there. And it is blurred in the bokeh. So I got my iris shot, I've got a good background. So we're up in the arbor here now with all this wisteria vine growing. And the thing about wisteria can be pretty coarse looking when there's no foliage on it, but there can be some really neat things to see. Um, sometimes the color shot's not the best, but maybe you can get something and convert it over to black and white. Uh, here's a nice little loop going on here. We've got the, the braids coming on back here with these things. And depending on what you're looking to photograph or what you want, there's some interesting things to get. There's one back here on the corner post that I'll take some pictures of. It was over on the other side of it a while ago, and it's on the shaded side. So I'm gonna get on the sunny side of it where it's lit up a little bit better and see if I can't get some shots through here. all kinds of loops and things around. If you're looking for something interesting, wisteria is a neat thing to shoot. As we wrap this up, I want to thank the Western Kentucky Botanical Garden for allowing us to come down here today and take this video. I'd like to thank Shane Robertson from GSS for taking this for us and working on the editing and everything and putting it together. And I hope everyone can take something away from this today and give them some better photo shoots when they get out on a situation and have to make the best of what they have whether it be a vacation or a windy day sometime when you aim to go out and shoot macro or whatever uh, think about bark textures think about getting parallel with the fronts of flyers as you try to focus on those and think about approaching from different angles think about being high being low being to the side of it things like that and hopefully you take something away from this that helps you in a photo shoot down the road Thanks.